All right, now third and final is the hyperinsulinemia. Any time the body has too much insulin for too long, it becomes insulin resistant. At first glance, <coughs> this, it looks a little odd or it sounds a little strange, but at second glance, there is generally a nodding of the head and an acceptance of it because this is reflective of a fundamental biological principle. An incessant stimulus will result in a resistance to that stimulus. I believe this applies to every aspect of our life. If we are, in, are exposing ourselves to something too much, we will become resistant to that thing, for better or worse, um, and often for worse, unfortunately, but even to the point of like addictions and habits. Uh, it's, it's the constant stimulation, and then the, the, the sensitivity to the stimulation goes down, and so now you need more of it. The cell is no exception when it comes to insulin. Too much insulin, or the body, too much insulin will make insulin resistance. Now, why do I focus on this, and why do I believe that it is the most relevant? Let me just present to you, at first, what is an uncommon paradigm. Let's imagine we have an uncommon individual who is, in fact, ignoring the conventional dietary advice and only eating three times a day because we've been told to eat five or six times a day. Um, so let's say we have an uncommon individual who's only eating at the three standard meals during the day. And this is what their insulin levels would look like, somewhat. You can see it spiking up, and it takes, even in a very insulin-sensitive person, a 20-year-old college-aged male, the most insulin-sensitive person on the planet, is going to have an insulin that would still take about three hours to come back down. So this is an uncommon person. Let's look at a slightly more common person, still very insulin sensitive, so the body gets a glucose load by eating something starchy or sugary. Insulin will rush up to try to clear the glucose out, and then insulin, having done its job, will go back into the background. So this is what it might look like in the person only eating three times a day. Now, again, most people don't do this. Unfortunately, in the wake of such a significant insulin spike often comes hunger. And so what most people do after having a very starchy, sugary breakfast, well, they need a starchy, sugary mid-morning snack. And then they need a mid-afternoon snack. And then they need an evening snack because you just have to have a few bowls of cereal or popcorn or ice cream at the end of the day. But even still, this is an uncommon response because this is an insulin-sensitive person. And most adults are not very insulin-sensitive. If we were to take the same eating strategy and look at what the insulin levels are like in a person who's insulin resistant, then all of a sudden, they never come down. The average person is in a constant state of hyperinsulinemia every waking moment of the day, and several hours into their non-waking moments, uh, into sleep. And one of the worst things you can do, as a brief aside, and for the sake of time, I cannot do too many of these, um, is go to bed with hyperglycemia. If you go to bed with the blood sugar levels elevated while insulin's trying to bring it down, you activate your sympathetic nervous system. You make yourself hotter, you're sweaty, you make you, your heart beating harder and faster, and you're lying there wondering why, you're so ang why, are, why am I so anxious? Everything's fine. Everything is fine. You just induced a, an acute kind of diabetic state, and now your sympathetic nervous system is active, so good luck trying to calm down. It's not going to work until you clear that blood sugar out, which will be about 1 a.m. <laughs> so anyway, let's come back to this. The way I presented this earlier, I presented to you the idea that as the cell stops responding to insulin, the body compensates by making more. But now I've shown you that if there is more insulin, it can contribute to the diminished response. So this very much becomes a vicious cycle that we have to break. Now, as much as this has sounded like a horror story, you can break it. Um, and in fact, you can break it exceptionally quickly. Insulin resistance can become totally reversed not only in many people within weeks, but there are full-on type 2 diabetics insulin, whose insulin resistance is so severe they can't control their blood sugar anymore, who can get off every medication in just months, literally reversing their disease.